I never thought I'd be telling the internet that Reddit is the best MCAT study tool, but here I am. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sohini and I'm a pre-med student at UCLA. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the MCAT, again. I know, it's everyone's favorite topic, apparently. It's no secret that the MCAT can be really expensive, and honestly, it shouldn't be. There are so many financial barriers to a medical career, and the MCAT is definitely one of them. From a registration fee of about $320 to buying books that might be $200 or a course that's thousands of dollars, not to mention lodging, travel to and from your testing site, plane tickets, gas, all the things. It's very expensive. Now, the AAMC does have a fee assistance program that can help you out with some of these costs if you do qualify, and I've linked that down below in the description box for you. But today, we're going to be talking all about completely free resources that I personally use to do well on the MCAT. If you checked out my last video, you'll know that I did purchase the Kaplan Review Book Set and the AAMC Official Practice Material Bundle. These were the two resources that I felt were worth the money that I spent on them, but I knew that I wanted to supplement my review with free resources because I didn't want to spend any more money on this exam. Before I mention anything else, I want to talk about the holy grail of all online media forums, Reddit. Specifically, r slash MCAT. This subreddit saved my life when I was studying for the MCAT because I found so many of the other resources I'll mention in this video on that platform. When I was reviewing my AAMC practice material and I didn't necessarily understand an answer or sometimes the explanations that they give officially are super short, I would type that AAMC question into the subreddit search and I could find dozens of posts trying to explain to me better why I got that question wrong or more information about that topic that I needed to know for my exam. The subreddit has a ton of crowdsourced information as well as study tips, study schedules, and general support just for doing well in the test. I definitely credit Reddit to... <laughs> credit Reddit. <laughs> I definitely credit most of what I know to Reddit and I would highly recommend you check it out. I never thought I'd be telling the internet that Reddit is the best MCAT study tool, but here I am. Next, the Kaplan chapter review sheets. This PDF was created by a Redditor named u slash mile down, and it honestly saved my life. I can't emphasize to you enough how important these sheets were to last minute cramming or just general review through my study schedule. Especially since I use the Kaplan review books for my own studying, this PDF lines up exactly with the chapters in that book. Each Kaplan chapter is summarized down to a single page in this PDF, which makes it super great for reviewing all of the big concepts. However, there's still a ton of detailed information in the diagrams and graphs, and these are great to know for those more specific and nitpicky questions on the MCAT. There are a lot of mnemonics and helpful shortcuts that can save you a lot of time on the exam if you know these like the back of your hand. I vividly remember recalling this exact hormone section on my actual MCAT because I had some question about naming all of the hormones that came from the anterior pituitary gland, and I was like, I've linked this PDF down in the description box and I would highly recommend you check it out, especially if you're using the Kaplan books to study with. Next up, Anki. If you are someone who responds well to memorization and flashcards, Anki might be the best software for you to use. Anki is free everywhere except for iOS, I believe, so you can get it on your computer and practice that way. Think of Anki as sort of like Quizlet, but way more powerful. Anki is based on this idea of spaced repetition. So basically, you make these flashcards and then the Anki algorithm will show them to you right before your brain is primed to forget that information. So over time, you'll see these cards less and less frequently, but you'll still see them in these increasing time intervals. And basically, over time, if you do these cards, you know, five to ten times over a span of three months, that information will be ingrained into your mind and it'll be super easy for you to call that information right away. Now, I'll be completely honest, I did try out Anki last year when I was studying for the MCAT, and for me, it just didn't really mesh with how I optimally study, but I know that a lot of folks swear by the software, and so I did want to include it in this video. So, do you remember our favorite Redditor, u slash mile down? Turns out, he converted his 90-page PDF into Anki cards. So, that means that if you want to study with the 90-page list, or you want to study with flashcards, you have both options now. Their Anki deck is linked in the Reddit post down below along with that 90-page PDF, 
and so you can access both down in the description box. If you do happen to access these and you have a Reddit account, I'd highly recommend you go upvote their post or leave a comment and show your appreciation. I'm sure they put in a lot of time and labor into making this free resource for all of us to use and I know that I benefited a lot personally from it. I want to mention a few more amazing review sheets that I found online that were really helpful resources. I primarily used these review sheets in my third month of studying when I was going through my practice exams because I didn't really want to dig through my Kaplan books that were each this thick. It was way easier for me to just go onto my PDF, search for a term, and get the information that way. First, I want to talk about the Leah Forsy MCAT cheat sheets. Y'all, this PDF is a must-have. It starts out with these shortcuts for basic math that you need to be able to do super quickly on the MCAT. These are things like sig figs, exponents, pH values, stuff like that. And you don't have a calculator, so you need to be able to do these heuristics really quickly in your mind. I think these tips were the make or break it point for how I was able to finish an incredibly difficult chem phys section within the time allotted. You won't have time to sit down there and do the math by hand. You just have to know how to get these numbers super quickly. This PDF is also a goldmine for all of the OCHEM and Biochem content that you need to know for the MCAT. Anything that you need to know by heart, including the entire glycolysis pathway, as well as the bajillion OCHEM reactions that you need to know, are all in this PDF and they're organized super well, so I'd highly recommend you check that out. The other sheet I want to mention is a physics equations review sheet. I tried really hard to find out who the creator of this was, but I saved the PDF to my study materials from last year and I looked through Reddit and I looked through Google, but I just couldn't find someone to credit this to, so I'm really sorry about that. If anyone does happen to find on Reddit who made the original post, let me know and I'll update the description box below. This PDF is amazing. It has all of the physics equations organized by subtopics, so circuits or fluids, stuff like that. To me, the best part about this review sheet is that it not only gives equations, but it also gives the units that you need to solve these equations. A tip to save time on the chem phys section specifically is if you don't know how to solve a math problem, which is like me half the time, you can look at the units they give you in the information provided, look at the units of the answer, and then use those conversion factors to quickly rule out some of the answers. I remember when I walked into my exam, you have a little bit of time before you actually start the exam. I wrote all of the kinematics equations down on my sheet because I knew I would forget them as soon as I started the test. These two sheets were what got me a really, really high score in the chem phys section. It ended up actually being the section I scored consistently highest on, and so I would highly recommend you check these out. The next one I want to mention is Jack Weston. I talked about Jack Weston in my last video, but I have to mention it again just because it's that good of a resource. I struggled a lot with raising my CARS score to where I wanted it to be, and I knew that I had to do daily practice in order to really understand how I should logic my way through these passages. Jack Weston is a great online free resource and it gives you a free passage each and every single day, and you have access to the archive going to way back when of all these different passages that are very similar to the AAMC style. If you start off your studying every single day with one or two Jack Weston passages, your car score will go up. The last thing I want to mention, of course, is Khan Academy. Obviously, everyone knows that Khan Academy has great content and great videos to review from, and the MCAT section is actually organized to be a sort of free online course for the MCAT. Whatever section you might find difficulty with, you can go onto Khan Academy and look that section up and I promise you will find something that will help you study it better. However, for the cars passages, I do suggest you stick to Jack Weston. For me, the Khan Academy cars just wasn't really the same as the AAMC style and if you practice cars a lot with the wrong sort of logic and style, when you get to the real AAMC material, you're not going to be able to reason it through the way that gets you the correct answer. I will say though that the passages for biochem, physics, those are really, really great and they are pretty difficult. So if you want to practice those more difficult style questions, Khan Academy is great for that. You, like me, probably learned some of the basic concepts for biochemistry like glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, but the MCAT actually expects you to know way more about metabolism than we cover in that intro to biochemistry course. These topics include gluconeogenesis, glycogenesis, glycogenolysis, pentose phosphate pathway, fatty acid metabolism, a lot of more in-depth stuff that we don't cover in the basic glycolysis stuff. Don't freak out, these topics are super low yield and at most you'll get one or two questions on the MCAT, 
but those one or two questions might be the difference between a lower percentile and a higher percentile score for you. They did show up on my biochemistry section, and I know that because I reviewed these topics in depth, I was able to bump my score up at least a point because I knew that one question. If you are struggling with maybe your review books, explanation of it, go on to Khan Academy. The pentose phosphate pathway, the fatty acid metabolism pathways are really, really difficult for me to understand at first, but the more you review those videos, the more it'll get ingrained into your brain and you'll understand enough to answer those questions. Finally, I want to talk about the beast, the goat of all online free resources, and it's also from Khan Academy. I think these were crowdsourced notes from the Khan Academy psychology and sociology video notes, but they are incredible. There's a 100 page version and a 300 page version, basically transcribing all of the psych socio video notes into a document. For me, the 100 page version was more than enough, but if you want to go for the 300 page version, go for it. This document covers the psych socio MCAT content in way more depth than your Kaplan or other review books ever could. I do want to note that it seems like in recent tests, the psych socio section is moving away from knowing raw definitions and more into some pretty intense graph and experiment analysis. Here is where the Khan Academy video notes and the Khan Academy psych socio practice passages come into play. If you can understand these graphs and experiments super quickly, I promise you, you will do better on these sections. Memorizing terms and concepts is only as good as how well you can apply them to your actual passages. So make sure you're covering both your bases. Okay, so that's it for this video, everyone. I hope you were able to find some resources that are free and accessible to make your MCAT studying a little bit easier for you. If you did like this video, please make sure to smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my channel to see more videos in the future. If you haven't already, follow my Instagram at, at SohiniX. I post on there for when I'm posting my next video and so you'll be the first people to see when my new videos come up. Also, I just want to give a really quick heartfelt thank you to everyone who commented on my first video or who reached out to me through DM. I was really grateful for all of the comments and encouragement and support that I got and it's making me even more excited to film more of these videos for you in the future. I can't wait to make more videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Sending love everyone. Bye. Bye.